Welcome back to Two Homers and a Realist. This is an off-season pod. We are ready to talk about everything that's going on here in the, what is this called, winter camp? Yeah. Winter camp, call yeah. it? Winter camp. Strength and conditioning camp. Off-season um, workouts. Off-season workouts, getting ready for spring. We can't can't get here soon enough. It's cold. We don't we don't like that. I'm Steve. I'm Connor. Lucas. Jay. All right, we got the full team here. We're ready to rock and roll. I think we'll start out by talking about what we're hearing about camp standouts and the guys that are making an impression and making some waves, maybe challenging for some positions. Uh, what are we hearing out there, guys? What are you excited about? Well, usually under most, especially under Lincoln Riley, I think they always wanted like player-led 7v7, which never really did much for your lines of scrimmage. So it was just a lot of... Playing high school skill position. Pretty much, yep. Which you can argue is good yeah. for your Seems rapport. Seems like our offense was pretty good while he was here. It's true. And it's not anymore. But Go ahead. We should hire him. Your rapport with your quarterback and receivers is... It probably helps quite a bit. I did never seem to do anything for our defensive backs and linebackers. Correct. Seven v seven. Not even close. But I don't think Venables has taken that approach, and it sounds like they're doing more like walkthroughs. I don't know positional walkthroughs or play specific walkthroughs, and like each group has someone leading them through it. Some either a veteran at the position or because it can't be coaches at this point, right? Pretty sure it can. Yeah, I don't think coaches can do Nothing anything. Nothing can be coach-led. Yeah. Only strength, but, and but strength and conditioning. Correct. So Schmidt is out there. And the advantage there, obviously, is learning the playbook, learning the schemes. I think they're trying to get more people up to speed to have more competition when camp actually starts. So can the players, which this may be a dumb question, so apologies for the ignorance, but the players can get a playbook they can have a playbook right now, right? I think is the second a they player a signed campus, signed right? their letter of intent, they probably they got a playbook. A playbook. Okay. Yeah. Um, as far yeah. as battles, there's like I said, there's not much to go off of, but it sounds like some players maybe have their positions set at the moment. McCullough, the transfer from Indiana, he's been working at the cheetah position. Um, Pearson was a transfer safety from Tech. Tech, and he's been playing a little bit at the Cheetah and at free safety, where he'll most likely be trying to win the job versus Key Lawrence. And from what we saw last year, <clears throat> if if a guy like that can't beat out Key, which, I mean, Key had some good, good plays, but he looked behind the ball a lot last yeah, it year. Yeah, right? it could be specific you know, run fits or passing situations that maybe one comes off the field. I think that the Pearson kid definitely comes downhill yeah. and will lay the we wood. We saw that. Yeah. So I think he's really good in run support. Hmm. Maybe Key's better at coverage. I don't know. but Well, and Key has – let's give Key a chance to develop. He yep. could get better. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so. he's got the physical tools. Well, he's played I mean, two he, full seasons here. He's looked the best. I mean, Under two physically, completely different staffs. Right. Yeah, physically Neither in stature. Very good. He, he's the best-looking – DB on the team. So he's, he's playing by the best defensive staff in all of football now. <laughs> so now Lucas is not, he's, he's not believing that we're good on defense either. Okay, interesting. Lucas, I, mean, he's just I watched 13 games last Lucas season. Is I just can paving, tell you, Lucas we're not is just good paving on the way for him to be, uh, he's making sure he's not going to be disappointed and he's mm-hmm. going to sing from the mountaintops. He's putting those expectations yeah. nice and low. Well, I had a, a, a Twitter poll this week that, surveyed listeners and others what is the most important thing for OU football development between now and the end of spring practice and it was a tie we had 42 percent saying strength and conditioning and 42 percent saying schemes and formations I think last year strength and conditioning was by far the big priority but it, it sounds like schemes and formations is the big um, priority now and so that was well it's not the big priority split. now so tied for our votes no, I, I mean among the coaches. I put, the I coaches put strength and conditioning because this is the time of year that you do it. I did too. I put schemes and formations so based did, on what so you had I. said. So did I. Uh, coming in third was individual skill sets at 13%, and then camaraderie and morale, 3% of 
of those surveyed. I don't I, really I'm think I'm going to withhold my comments around around that. <laughs> I kind of put is, that one in as a as a, a bait to see if somebody so, would take to see that. See how many but, olds would actually. Vote. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The I only just, thing is, this time know. of year, literally, kids are putting on not, not even good weight. They're just you're putting on the weight that they want you to put on for your position and etc what's mm-hmm. good for your body mm-hmm. i mean they'll st- and this is where you get stronger because during the season you don't work out no you're gonna stronger. lose actually yeah so, so now that, but, is the time you you really try and pack. like if you if you're a defensive end that needs to put on 20 pounds this is when you do it i viewed the question a little bit differently the question was more between now and the end of spring practice which i know right right, right now it's very focused on strength and conditioning but by the end of spring practice <clears throat> i think last year Still pretty fresh, uh, still a brand new staff, brand new scheme, brand new philosophy. I think between now and the end of spring practice, I would want most of what we've been focused on to be we're solid in the plays that we're running, we're solid in the schemes and the the tactics that we're going forward with, as opposed to hopefully the strength and conditioning that's already there. With yeah, a I'm, lot of I'm these worried guys. if we focus too much on strength and conditioning that that's all it's going to be. We need to know what what offense and defensive formation we're running, what what the strategy is, who's supposed to be where, and not because I don't want to look up mid-season next year and have guys clearly out of position and not knowing what they're doing. Well, I think you the way do. It was. The thing is, I think you do both. You do, regardless. Well, for sure, you do. for I sure. Mean, it's not like we're picking which one they're going to no, work no, no, on. No, 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 through spring. No, I just thought it was an interesting kind of. Those two made sense to me, so it it, it tells me a lot about the the people that follow us on Twitter that they're intelligent, that they chose the right two. Uh, how about the guys that we're losing and how good they're doing in the Senior Bowl and now the NFL invitations? I thought I thought it was pretty interesting how good the the practice players are that we uh, have graduated off. Um, that that, that kind of says everything there needs to be said about some of these guys. That you had Gray as the number one practice player on the offense, and then uh, Broyles getting all kinds of praise. It was interesting. Yeah, it, it is, and it's <clears throat> it's almost it's it's a little different. It's like we've had guys who have in the past who have been not great players within OU, um, or not the players that we thought they should be, and then go to these go to these combines and go to the Senior Bowl and completely just light up the boards at, on the field, right? So mm-hmm. Perry on Winfrey being one of those guys, uh, Kenneth Murray being one of those guys who in my opinion, underperformed at OU, but has outperformed himself uh, in the pros. And now seeing the opposite where, uh, like you said, Steve, you know, Eric Gray was our guy last year, and there's a reason he's getting voted best practice player and not best overall running back. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, um, I don't know. I felt it it was telling. It's interesting. I I feel the same way. I I love the guy. I think he was very uh, integral to kind of the glue that kept his team together last year, but... Someone like a Braden Willis, who is always going to go and give 186 percent, and <clears throat> you know, it. I just don't see that type of guy being what the NFL is looking for. So I could be completely wrong. P- people may disagree, but Gray um, being the kind of guy that the NFL no, but I, yeah. I, I on top of Gray, I think yeah. Willis. Like oh, Willis, Willis right. trying to go to the league as a tight end slash. He's H-back. tough. Like, it's very tough. He's I in a he's know. in a middle you know, spot. A that's very spot. yeah, tweener. Like, yeah, he's going to make a squad based on his effort. I mean, Blake Bell is still. Has a <clears throat> roster spot in the NFL, and I think very Brian Willis athlete. is more productive than Blake Bell. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't yeah, know. I mean, I don't know. maybe in t- maybe if you go back and look at like college productivity, yeah, well, I think but... Willis can play special teams too. I don't know if Bell is on special teams. Hmm. Yeah, yeah Bell's so Will, Willis Willis will be a dog them. on, you know. Well, I hope so. Kickoffs. I hope. And... I hope he gets a roster and has a, some success there. But it's it's interesting. It seems like we've got, which explains why they always saw the field and. And, and the difference between what we were seeing as fans and what multiple coaching staffs poten- apparently or potentially saw in that these guys were really good in practice. They probably listen really good and, and nod their heads and they're in the right positions. I don't know. And it seems like maybe they are not game players as much as they are practice players, but we'll see. One of the things that broke this past week not a moment too soon was the Big 12 schedule. The Big 12 schedule finally got released. So Finally. Apparently, I, I think it's pretty clear there were a lot of negotiations going on trying to figure out 
who was going to get OU, get Texas home. I think with positioning, knowing that they weren't going to probably get a 2024 return game. So I think you've got a lot of teams that are trying to negotiate up until the the last minute on that. And you probably have OU in Texas saying, we're only going to give so much, and here's what we need out of this deal. And so they, they did release a schedule finally. Notably, OU in Texas did not make their own graphics and their own promotions for it. They just basically reposted what the Big 12 had done. And in fact, OU did not post the schedule on their website for several days, maybe yeah. a week, yep. until they finally said, okay, yeah, we're, we're going to play in this league. And this would, So I took that to maybe be some ongoing negotiations. We all think that has everything to do with the move to the SEC and that potentially coming between 2024 or 2025. What do you guys think about that? I think it's what we've been talking about. <clears throat> I think this is our last season coming up, the 23-24 season. We'll play all the way through the spring sports, and then next summer we go. There have been a lot of contract negotiation between Fox, ESPN, and the Big 12, and that's mainly – I think it's going to be OU and Texas will will sign away future non-conference games to those uh, media outlets – in exchange for letting us out early with the negotiations with the conference. Yeah, I'd like to see him just just give the Ohio State game to uh, Box and let's let's move along the Texas right. Ohio State. Like, come on, let's just give and go. When is that game scheduled for? Uh, it's like twenty eight or something. Yeah, I mean okay. they're, so talk, they're talking like line. we would give maybe the we have OU Nebraska again around I don't know twenty nine thirty or whatever the time frame is. Yeah. We can just Maybe give, we got Michigan. We, got we Michigan just give both too. of those games to the right. to Fox or whatever. <clears throat> whatever Which it is, that's probably a Fox game most of the time. Whatever it is, I think the deal is going to get done within the next two or three months, and it'll it'll be announced. I think so too. I'm I'm pretty confident it's going to get done. Anybody have a different opinion there? I, I'm like seventy five percent that we're going to be in the SEC in the twenty four football season. Well, I'd say yeah, I'd, I'd say even more than that for me. I'd say probably closer to like eighty five percent. I think it's. I think it's just a matter of a couple of I's that need to be dotted and T's that need to be crossed yeah. at the end of the day. I think it was funny last uh, last week, the reaction of even like notable like media members who reacted to the tweet that talks have stalled and just tweeting things like, oh my goodness, like, holy cow, like we're staying in this till 2025 <laughs> as if things can't change on a dime. Right. Um, so I think, I think anybody who's reading that or <clears throat> thinking that, any deal is done uh, before something's sealed and signed uh, is is super naive. I, th- I think yeah. it's definitely going to be the twenty twenty four season uh, that we get to the and I think that's south. Good. I, if I had to choose, I would say I want to do this. I'm ready as a fan. I think the team will be as ready as they're going to be. I, I don't see there being a lot of benefit for sticking around another season. Even if it means we aren't obviously as good as we think we would be in a 25 season, I don't know. We might the, we, we might be able to pick up and gain as much in the SEC in a 24 season as we would gain by not being there. I don't, I don't really know what the difference would be. Well, Why we're it would about necessarily Jackson set Arnold us getting back. A, getting a full season to learn the game, the speed in the Big 12 as opposed to first game being in the SEC. Yeah, but his first game won't be there. His first game is a starter potentially, but yeah, but three, he'll, three he'll have played. out of conference games. But I mean, well, not just that. He'll play in the twenty four season, Maybe. and then he'll play in. I bet he plays a lot. Yeah, a lot, a lot. In fact, I would give you a pretty good shot that he steals the job away at hmm. some point in the season. But even if not, I bet he plays the full complement of four games. And, oh, I don't think they're worried about the four games. And, and probably Hopefully not. Hopefully he's in a lot more be. games than that. And, yeah. yeah, they shouldn't be. But I don't know. They, well, they seem to be concerned about out, that. So he's not going to get the chance for mop-up duty hardly. <laughs> and then I think, you know, ooh, the SEC. I mean, we're not necessarily playing Georgia followed by Alabama right after the non-conference. We're probably, we aside from we Texas. We don't know how they're going to schedule it. Yeah, I don't know. That could be. <laughs> the SEC might make it pretty rough. I doubt it. Texas. We hey. may go from... The last two years of being in the Big 12 games. I don't know, man. I don't if think you're, so. If you're Alabama or Georgia, in my opinion, you don't, after, want, to you play don't us. want to play us. We yeah. may be getting screwed the last two years of the Big 12 between uh, I don't think we get scheduling screwed. and officiating. Yeah. And no, then go into so. the SEC and I jump right so. into it. Who knows? I, I am dreading I, I, the I officiating. So. Unless a and m is, is part of the um, decision-making there, I, I think that everybody in the league 
is going to think strategically. They don't want to see the best teams in the league beat each other up right. and knock their, themselves out of what, is, at that point, is a 12-team playoff. Exactly. We had a really good uh, we had a really good midweek uh, right before our bye week. I don't remember what week that was or what game it was after when we discussed, you know, between the four of us, our preferences. And I think most of us landed, if not all of us, landed on the, on the 2024 season. Yeah. Um, with some understanding that if it happened in 2025, there's there's some pros there, but at the same time, um, I'm still of the belief 2024 from a timing perspective is is what we need. I think it's to me it's clearly better. I'm ready to be done, and I think it's I think it's a healthy thing. I feel like there's going to be a sea change in attitude outside of the program from fans and everyone, and then inside the program just knowing. Now you know your dest- w- when you're going to be there, that you're there. You're now part of something you want to do. It's kind of like it's w- a lot worse than sticking around for two weeks in a job you're leaving. It's like sticking around for six months in a job you're leaving. And you're ready to start the new job and be with the new folks and get what the new chapter in your life to begin. So I, I think it would be pretty helpful for us to be there in, in 24. Yeah. Lucas, you brought up a good point, though. I mean, I'm we saw how bad it was last year. And you, you can actually go to statistics and look yeah but i i am i like the it one is concern- holding call <laughs> it is concerning around the officiating that that Nine took place games. not only last year but it, what's going to come with a more than likely imminent move to the next conference it was so, something like 750 snaps defended and we had one holding call in our favor all season and texas was like Second. 700 they had, they had one two two yeah well, so, they had I mean, two though they had the one next, also the next closest was like 17 and the top was i think osu had 37 holding calls in their favor so I, it, that frustrates me so much. I mean, it me can't so be much. that. That's just insanity. 37 yeah. and 1 is the disparity. Well, it just happens to be OU in Texas also. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. So are the administrations of OU in Texas not at least Battling behind the scenes that? calling foul? Right. Raising concerns, saying what's going on? I mean, at some point, you owe it to your program and, and everything you're trying to build and your fans to be out there and push back against this well, and, and what's say more, what's going on. Yeah, and what's more frustrating is I want is an audit. You look you look at a lot of those. I mean, we're we're a couple plays away in, in a few games. I'm not saying like oh, we absolutely, deserve it, but we're a couple yeah, plays in a few of those three, games about that, yeah. from from winning, and it's we're a holding call or two away from coming out on top in some of those games. So, uh, including the bowl game against Florida State. So I mean, it's it's tough. I mean, there was a lame duck commissioner. So maybe the new commissioner comes in and straightens the ship and said, hey, you know, we reviewed all this stuff. You guys did a really shitty job of officiating, especially against OU in Texas last year. We want, we want to make this look better. We've got four new teams coming in. We don't want to show favoritism and make it look as bad as it was last year. So let's do a better job. I doubt, I doubt it. I, I think I doubt to push it back. Yeah, I doubt it as well. But, I mean, I, it's, it's inc- – okay, so the, the best case in point that I can think of off the top of my head last year – was against Oklahoma State. I think they threw 63 attempts, mm-hmm. right? And and no we were getting pressure yeah. all night. All night. Not a single hold. How? So I, I could get it. If your pass rush was never getting to them, right? and he had 63 attempts, okay, maybe there were no holds. But he was under duress. So after that many attempts, you're going to start holding defensive players. Mm-hmm. Now, ultimately, it did not cost us that game. But it just the absurdity of any game. But we know to throw sixty three missed calls that we saw in that game. But just to throw it sixty three times, mm-hmm. and there's not a single hold on your offensive line. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. It, it's pretty unreal. It, it's really unreal, and it speaks, you know, to incentives and professionalism or a lack thereof. So, is anyone looking into this? Does anyone care? I I think that. Everyone should, because if you think you're the beneficiary of this, this is fleeting. We're about to leave, yeah. and you're left with the league with a bad reputation, and it, at the very least, you're, le- you're left with refs that you can't trust, right. that you don't think are very qualified and very good at their job. If they're willing to do this, either through ignorance or through malice, one of the two, which is it? Take your pick. Not, neither of them are good, and they don't speak very well of what is ahead for the conference. So I... I I think that is troubling. One thing that's not troubling is that Jeff Lebby has stayed. He was pursued by Alabama and turned it down twice, turned down getting to talk to them twice. Um, 
and we kept our core staff together. I think that's a pretty big positive coming into the off season. Yeah, and I think I mean it, it's it's a it's an interesting shift that we've had. We t- we texted about it from our last pod where um, it re- the th- af- since our last pod things really heated up with Lebby right after that um, in terms of him him potentially going to Alabama, Bama being in talks with him, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, um, to you know, Steve, I think I think you've put it well multiple times is to be able to have coaches that are being pursued by the Alabamas of the world is saying something correct about our program. Um, it's a big. I, mean, I don't know what we, they were we, seeing, but that, but that, and that was my next point. I there, there may be some doubts in our mind just based on what we saw over over this year because I, I agree, Lucas. I'm not. There must be something that Lebby has. In it's a vote of, of confidence. No, yeah. no doubt about it. So um, that, I mean, they also tried to get the Washington series. offensive coordinator, and he turned him down. Yeah, but that was like that was like four guys <clears throat> deep into their search. Lebby well, was a, what, a number one, crazy, number two guy. You got probably the, you get you got a program that's been the best in the last fifteen years, and they went through four or five efforts to get an OC before they finally settled on Tommy Reese from Notre Dame. Well, and they re- and they went through a recycled. Uh, Replacement at defensive coordinator. That's just like again. Yeah. It's like, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah, what's going Why, on? How can Saban can't? <laughs> but get, we, but we, but we, we. I think we probably should keep in mind. There's a difference between pursuing someone and offering them the job. So we don't know how many of these guys got the job offer, versus, hey, we're interested in you, and no, thank you, or I'm going to go try it on for size, and no, thank you. Well, no, thank you, because we didn't actually offer you the job yet. But, and and that I could see that being a saving grace for a guy like Lebby or the guy at Washington, who they say, hey, you know, we're not going to offer you the job, but we would give you the the benefit of being able to turn us down. And then and that is obviously a, a benefit to, to him versus, yeah, we looked at him and we don't want him. Do you guys think, do you guys think Bama offered him? Do you guys think that... Lebby? Yeah, like made a formal offer to Lebby? I don't think so. I think they did. You think they did? Well, then that's good if they did. I mean, that's great if they did. I don't know. I would guess that they didn't, but I. It doesn't surprise me that he didn't go, even if he got the offer. I never thought he was going to go, but part of that is I didn't think they'd actually make an offer. Right. But I thought if they made an offer, we would probably counter it. He's got more things going on. It's it's sort of out of the fire into the front or out of the frying pan. It into was kind of strange. Is um, Bama has, has their assistants are not paid very well. Hmm. I'm pretty sure Lebby was making. At least a half a million dollars more than O'Brien was. Really, huh. a half a million? More? Yeah, I think so. And wow. Saban is notorious for people tiring very quickly of working for him. Yeah, because of how he's grueling. Yeah, how grueling it is to keep up with him and his his it's expectations new, of new how much well, Bill, Bill Snyder. And I, and I, you know, I I would say that's a um, compliment to anybody who sees through that and understands that that is part of the 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 pluses and minuses of working in that organization, not just the expectations from the that. fan base. Bill O'Brien was getting one point one million in Alabama. Wow. Levy is what? Like one nine. Wow. Huh. That's a yeah. huge I mean that that's that's, that's, a that's gap. I mean what did what did uh, Riley just get at Clemson? Oh like two two, two and, and a half or something. Right? Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see how he handles that. That'll be real interesting to see how that goes. And you know, I have my doubts. he's probably not, if he succeeds, he's not going to be there long. Right. But they may get three seasons out of him. But I, I would say I have my doubts too. Now, granted, though, he's going into a very weak league. And so he's got a lot of yeah. opportunities to succeed. There is um, Florida State, is uh, an, uh, a, a program on the rise. Miami, it's North, hard Car- to North say. Carolina's got a young North Carolina's pretty solid. But they're they, not gonna they're not gonna sustain. They're probably not gonna sustain or or they'll plateau. Yeah. They may have already plateaued. I think so there's a lot of opportunities likely. for success there at, at Clemson. So I thought it was good. I think we all agree it's good to keep it together and we may look back and say, uh, boy, I wish they sure would have taken Levy off our hands early because we're wanting him to go or getting rid of him. But I will bet against that at this point. I'll say that he's <laughs> I will say that he leaves of his own choosing for a better position before uh, is how he makes it set, his exit at OU. It will not be a forced um, removal. He won't get fired. That's my prediction. I agree with that. So, speaking of predictions, let's talk about 2023. Um, 
I want to talk about the OU record. I, I, what, what do you guys think OU's record's going to be? Just regular season. And more importantly, what do you think at this point it needs to be for Brent Venables to avoid the hot seat? What is the bare minimum, based on the schedule as we see it, what should he, what, what should we do after, you know, following obviously a, a um, six and six season? Want me to go first? Yeah. On paper, it's, it's 11 wins on paper. I'm going to take the oop. Yeah, I'll I'll, now, I'll let you finish. Yes. Uh, uh, just 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 looking at just looking at who the names your, of who, opponents. Who are your challenge games? Who are your tough challenge games? Challenge games in order. Toughest games Texas. Easy. Second toughest is BYU. And I actually think the third toughest is probably Cincinnati. I don't think so. I think TCU. I think TCU will be tough. I don't think so. I think T- TCU was a 5th and 6th year Team but full they, of COVID players. They replaced a lot of people, though, right? It doesn't matter. Now, they did lose it Riley. Matter. It doesn't matter. They, I think they, they lost We could be much. right, but we could be They brought in some hairs. good transfers. They got Bama receivers. Yeah. They got Bama running back. Yeah, I mean. I still think they lost too much. So, and, and, and here's the deal. Last year, they were the opposite of us. They won so many games that they probably should not barely, have won barely. whatsoever. Yep. And I think that's not going to happen again. And I think their team is worse. Well, someone inter- mm-hmm. someone interviewed someone interviewed um, Sonny Dykes before the season started, and he told them that you know hopefully we're like a bowl eligible type squad, maybe a little bit better than that. I mean, but he they didn't even think his team. Like, he didn't think his t- freaking team. They were like six was and a half. That. Like the the, the over over under was six and a half yeah. on them. I'm pretty sure. No, that, that could just be how much they miss on these things. But I do think we're splitting hairs when we talk about is Cincinnati, is it TCU, is it Baylor, Kansas State, two well-coached teams that we don't know if they're going to have the player talent there. We don't play Kansas State. It does speak. I think no, Cincinnati no, has more talent. Who is wearing the who is wearing? I think the, Cincinnati the has more talent than people think. They're not but, that far removed from making the playoffs. So they lost Luke. Fickle. I don't know. They, they lost. lost a, they Fickle. lost a lot. Luke Fickle's that, gone. That program that is crash and burn. If we think we're just going to walk up there and win that game, like it's just no. I don't think games. anybody it's thinks that. But, but at the same but time, I'm, but I, yeah. But I will say, in agreement with your fairly aggressive eleven and zero on paper, that I don't think the league looks very or eleven and one. That the league looks very strong. I would agree. I think no. I mean, our, specifically, our schedule doesn't look that tough to me. Right. At yeah. All. Because you don't have Kansas State, and um, if if I know you can't do this, if you mm-hmm. took last year's results and just pretended they weren't in your brain, you looked at this schedule. It is a 11, 12 win schedule. Period. Yep. So was last year's, and last year's was really close to nine and three, with as big a shortcoming losses and everything on paper now again paper. i'll probably go more sure, with sure i'll probably go more with a gosh it's just you said 11 to one to go with it i'll go with nine i'll go nine ten wins what do they have to have before he's on the hot seat is it nine I have to yeah seven honestly that schedule no way you cannot win seven games with that schedule next year that is so bad he has to win more. He has to has win, to win more, more than, than seven. So eight and four is your minimum. <sighs> At least, yes. I would I would agree. I think eight and four is the minimum with that schedule. And I mean, just skip the non con because that's just that's just not a thing. Yeah, I if if you lose Texas, BYU, and either or a Cincinnati or a TCU, something like that, okay, that's fine. I think those three losses are okay. Right. We're improving, On we're paper. moving in the right direction. Whatever is Oklahoma State going to be really bad? If you I think add a be really, really, really bad at football. <laughs> yeah. If you put a fifth loss, if you put a fourth and fifth loss on there, hey, that's yeah. not Texas, BYU, right. and TCU. If you lose a Cincinnati and a who else? I mean, uh, SM, SMU's a a, SMU's a Pac-12 Kansas? school, man. Kansas. Yeah, Jaden Daniels, no joke, up in Kansas. That's not going to be fun, frankly. <sighs> It's Kansas. It's still Kansas. It's still Kansas. Look at their top to bottom recruiting. I mean, West Virginia sucks. Yeah. Oklahoma State sucks. Yeah. We don't play Baylor. It's a we really, don't play Kansas. It's State. a really bad league. UCS pretty bad, right? Gus Malzahn. They're on. decent. Gus Malzahn's out. It's there. not an easy win, but it's you it's know at home. It's going to be a hype game because it's going to be a little homecoming for uh, or a 
revenge whatever thing for it, yeah. whatever you want to call it for DG and uh, Levy. Levy. I, I would say that uh, I've got to set a pessimistic nine and three. Okay, so I'm I'm saying uh, eight and four is a minimum. I agree with that. And Iowa State's gonna suck. I would say. I, I I'm probably more of a nine and three. I'm gonna try to to temper myself yeah, at this point. Same. But because I think I need that to see there's a better shot. Us. There's a better shot that we're twelve and zero than that we're five and seven. I, I yeah. like that. Yes, I would yeah. agree. And probably better than six and six. Like it, it is very lopsided. We were just we were too close this last year. And that's what and I'm I saying. think the team is yeah. more talented. I need to now. I need this team to show me that they can go win those games yeah. that they let get away from them last year. And you show me Not that. Not panic when things yeah. start going you wrong. You show me that, I'll, I'll adjust upwards to my 9 and 3. Not in, anything less than 9 and 3. I think 8 and 4, Venables is safe. But I think anything less than 9 and 3 is a massive, massive, like, what the F just happened. To your point. Because this, I am looking at the schedule. It is a weak ass league. It's bad. Yeah. And of course, I'm sure you're going to say, would agree, if, if they. If there's something unexpected that we're not seeing on here, and somebody rises up and is a really good, if there's I mean, another TCU, yeah, all bets are off. Yeah, if there's another yeah, TCU are off. of the, of but the I like world. like Tech was better last year than people thought, right? So and we're avoiding them, right? Baylor, I think, had a down year for Baylor last right. year, right? And they're well coached. We're avoiding them, K-State. at least initially, right? K State yeah. was always been a thorn for us. Um, well coached, yeah, and they're we're it's not just. Playing them. It's it's about as good as we I would can love ask. an OUK State Big Twelve Championship. That would, oh yeah, to to round off the to end it all the Big Twelve at old. Oh, it'd be it'd be great. I I think Lucas, you brought up a good point the other day. Texas doesn't leave the state of Texas for an away game, right? I think they play ten Texas and, ten games in the state of Texas, and Oklahoma State does not have a Texas school on their schedule, which is. Interesting. It is real interesting. So, so Lucas, what do you think? What what is? No, they have a Houston. They have Houston. Win loss next year. Yeah, they have Houston. Sorry. <clears throat> Eight and four, and that puts uh, Brenton on the hot seat, in my opinion. Who are? I, I who agree. Are, I, I think eight. Who and are four. our losses? Who are our losses? Whoever you want them to be. I mean, the too early. SMU Tulsa. The way too Iowa early State podcast that we're doing here. Yeah. Um, way too early. Texas predictions. loss. Okay. Uh, at Kansas loss. Ooh. Okay, um, that's a bold prediction. TCU loss, um, and then toss up between BYU and Cincy. Okay, all right. I don't think it's crazy. I, I don't think, think so you you are really actually impressive. you're at the minimum. I don't think this seems any good. And you're saying you're saying at the minimum, Andy's on the hot seat. That's where we're actually going to be. They Why are they not get any good? Incredibly better than last season. That at is, about six positions on each side of the ball. They would have to be barely better last season, and they're nine and three. They will have to be incredibly better on about six positions on each side of the ball. They're, they're three or four plays away team. from being nine and three. There are a few six bounces positions. In the foot. Nine and three is an average team to me. You're yeah. saying we have to be better at fifty percent of the positions that we played last year. Yep. To be what? To be more than se- like, to be nine and what? three. Nine and three is six a good seven. team, not a great team. No, answer the question. To be what? You said six positions get us what? That gets us better than the eight four record. <laughs> if if we're well, I would bet that's if going we're to status quo at, at the majority positions, we won't be. We won't even be close we, to status quo. You don't think we're with this improve. horrible schedule? You don't think we're we may improve. be improved to an eight and fourteen? You don't think we'll improve across six the board. positions on each side of the ball? Yes, no, I don't think so. Yes, really. Nope. You don't think we'll be better at receiver, nope. better at quarterback, better at offensive line, which is multiple positions. And tell me what positions actually, because that's a very specific that you're narrowing it down to a pretty specific criteria that makes us that is separating a good team from a bad team. Well, the quarterback's the same. Okay, he, I'll give you I don't that think one. he's gonna be any better. So I think we I one. think we know what Dylan Gabriel is. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think, think there's some. The wide receivers are probably gonna go down because I don't think we have a Marvin Mims replacement. Um, we don't. I don't think Stogner is going to be as good as Willis, so I think that's a downgrade. Um, we don't have a. We don't have a Harrison left tackle. We don't have. You're a acting like Juan we have. Morris. We have not brought in depth on any of these positions. Though, like I know Willis on offense, it, I don't think we have. 
I, well, I think we got our. I think Kylie left, of Willis. I mean, I'll I, say Stogner's going to be better. than I think Willis. our left tackle. Dylan Gabriel will be better than Dylan Gabriel last year. And I think our wide receiver position is going to be fine with Gibson and Anderson being able to step in. We I don't think not you're not going to have a Marvin a Mims at running back. I think running wide back will be as better. good. It'll be better or better. It'll be better. Flat out better. I think wide receivers are, are running back bigger. duo Scary. will be better than Scary, not the good. single yeah. version of Eric Gray. Right. The two of them combined will be better. That that's two one that's one position. Okay. For That's sure. one position. Dylan Gabriel will, will be better. Dylan Gabriel will be about the same as he has been. I think he'll be better. Which be is better. a serviceable quarterback. I think our offensive line will be better. I don't think the offensive line as will be better. As a unit. I don't, I don't know where you're getting that. I don't know what. I don't know who's replacing Harrison that will be better. Well, I mean, he he's started he's a 40 games at Stanford. He's a second-round pick. It'll be the kid from Stanford. It'll be Rouse. Yeah, my mom met him, and, and he, she said he's a great guy. Oh, yeah, so. well, there we well, got there a voucher. You go. he's wow. As long as we got a voucher, he's probably an All American. I'm, I'm sure he's a great guy. He's probably an All American, but that doesn't do. You, I like nasty guys on the offensive line. Yeah, well, he he That's ate. Me. Oh, you nasty boys! He ate those uh, Palo Alto liberals for breakfast, dude. So. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, he was was he Pac-12 All Conference? Yeah, probably. I don't think he was, and that's a pretty shitty conference. So, I mean, I hope he proves me wrong, but I don't think I think it's a downgrade to Harrison position. You don't have a Marvin Mims. Um, that's one. For, I think Farouk, that's one, for, receiver. one receiver. Farouk will be better out of a whole unit. But it's, Farouk will be better than he was this year, more than likely. Just we got, we still have Stoops. Farouk will be better. Stoops has shown what he is the last three years. He's the you got to hope Gibson's a guy. You got to hope Anderson's a guy. Gibson Anderson. Neither one of those guys got on the field this season. So will they drop down. balls in their hands on a repeated regular basis? Because that was what Marvin Men brought to the table quite a few times. He was a very good receiver at times. He was a very average receiver overall. And I don't think anybody's – that's what I'm saying. That's the not good part is we're losing Marvin Mims, who was below average this year for him, and I don't think we have a better one coming in. I'm, I'm looking at it as a unit. I think that unit is going to be – I think there's more talented players. Better. They just have to do it. They just have to do it. I think there's more talented players than what Mims Defense? was. Defense? I think that's top to Leaves bottom better. Balance better. Defense might have six players better than the previous year. Well, maybe player, players, but the offense no, will not. I think players is easy. You're 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 making it too easy for me to be right about this. It's easy to have six better players. Say say units are they going to be better? Because I can find one player who's better, and that's not saying much. If if the linebacker, if two or three linebackers suck, that's no good. We only have two linebackers. Right? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> if we, I who's think the same linebacker, the linebacker core will be better. The defensive backs will be extremely good, much better. And I thought they were good last year. And why, I think they were good last year. Why is the linebacker core going to be better? You're replacing, you're replacing Agwebu. Agwebu. because I don't think Agwebu was any good. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think he was that good either. But Canis can be super green still. I, so even I think he might be talent, surprised. I would not I use, think, I would not use the phrase super, super green. green. I yeah. think he's going to be fresh. But I think he's going to have a, a year in the system. I don't think he's going to be worse than Igwebu. No. No. But God, I don't no. think he'll be better than Igwebu first I do. year. I, did. I think, I I think after that, that, maybe game 8-9. How can nine? we measure, how can we measure I'm that looking stack? At the whole, I'm looking at the whole season. How you can know, we measure how, that? How can we measure that stack? I'll take that back. I don't know. I mean, you can't just call off tackles. No. That's just eyeball test. Yeah, you kind of have to eyeball it. Okay. Well, I don't see a lot from my seats, so you'll have to let me <laughs> That's know true. what you see. Long ways up there. So, so I mean, I think I think defensively I think defense, at the eleven positions we may be better at the four ends. of those. The ends have but to get offense, better. Offense, I don't think we're be better, better at any of those positions. Ends have to be better. The ends have to be better, and you have to hope. I, for me, coming out of spring ball, if if you told me that uh, Downs and Grimes are Our backups coming out, I'd be happy. Boom. Yeah. PJ needs to start. We have a whole different. No, not just that. You got the. Uh, do you think Venables is going to start a yeah. true freshman at the defensive and, end? Hell yeah. No chance. And Ford, if if there's a healthy Ford and the kid from Wake Forest, are your two? if those are two starting defensive ends, like I said, and you've got Ethan Downs and Grimes as their backups, what about, uh, the whole defense has changed, in my opinion, if that if that's what comes out. What about Armis and Thomas as well? Well, I, I think him and PJ are going to be fighting for those third downs. Maybe they're both on third downs. Maybe they're both of Russians. I wouldn't be mad to not see Grimes or Downs play more than twenty five percent of the snaps this season. I, I think if you After have a healthy Ford, and I can't, I don't know why I can't. Both, what was it? What's the Wait Forest guy's name? I can't remember. Roth? Bothroyd. Yeah, something Bothroyd. like that. It sounds cool. like somebody from Star Wars. Yeah, it does. If those two, 
<laughs> yeah, if those two are your starting defensive ends, then our defense is legitimately changed. Who's who's on the interior? It'll be Kelly and Co. And Jordan Kelly has shown flashes. Isaiah Co. We'll see. The interior so, is a question mark. That is a question mark for me. It is, but I think they can hold their ground, and our ends could not contain their edges whatsoever. God, no. Or so, get pressure solo. I have high expectations for what I think they can achieve and should be achieving in terms of one year to two year development out of the staff. It seems like you, I think, Lucas, you have that desire, but you don't have any belief or expectation that they can actually do it right i think part of my problem is you're bringing in a bunch of new players that don't know the system and brent's system has proven to be overly complicated over the last two decades that we have seen in person when he was at clemson those guys after they've been in the system a couple years had gotten it he didn't start a bunch of freshmen at clemson he he they were really junior heavy it seems like on defense at clemson And those two years that he had those guys, he got the most out of them. And I don't think we have the players on campus coming into this, into the last season, that this would be their second year, that are really great enough players that this second year will be, they'll be awesome, let's say, in this defensive system. Well, I don't think that, I don't expect they're going to be what we expect to see out of a Brent Venables defense four years from now, or in comparison to, the peak years at Clemson. But if you look back at at our defensive efficiency improvement this year over last year, and if you look at what he brought to Clemson between his before he arrived, when he arrived in the the next year, it is like a skyrocket up in the rankings. And I expect we're going to see the same type of effect. I don't know why it would be any different. I would bet his recruiting is stronger and the transfer portal damn sure is stronger now than it was when he arrived at Clemson. Right, but going into this last season, we did this pod, and you brought out <clears throat> OU's rankings were, you know, 112 in this category and 80th in this category, and would we be better than this this year? And most of those categories, we weren't better. We it were, was a surprise. We actually were, we were, we were better, and then all of a sudden it fell off at the end. We, underperf- we, we underperformed. We underperformed, to for sure. For sure. But I don't think there's any doubt in that. Like I said, go well, we into lost this, a lot of talent. I think the we need six better it. players on each side of the ball, and I think the defense is maybe getting four of those. So you think? And Brent's I don't think the, the offense hot, is getting all any of this. Of those. Said you think Brent's on the hot seat at eight and four, whereas you're kind of saying there's no reason to expect we should be very good. So to me, eight and four is a is a celebration season. College football is a big business. You go from going eleven and two the last year. Or well, two years ago to six and seven this year, and then you're talking eight and four this coming up coming up season. That's hot seat. That if you don't win at least ten games that next season, so you're gone. You you think in my opinion should be or will be both. If he goes six then and how seven, can that eight, be? What, four, what did you? We were we were number four in recruiting and probably in the easily in the top ten net transfer portal. I'm, what did I'm you expect hot, we were going to do? Hot seat for the for th- season three. He goes six and seven. He goes then he goes eight and four. He goes eight and four again. I want somebody different. If he can't win ten games season three, we need somebody in here that can. Yes. Yeah. It it seems like you're kind of saying it both ways though. You're saying like there's no way we could be good, and at the same time we have to be extremely good, or he needs to be fired. I'm not saying there's no way we can be good. I'm saying my expectation is eight and four. I'm with Jay on paper. Texas is maybe the only team that has the talent that we do on paper but from what i've seen last year on paper we should have won 10 or 11 games too and and we were far far away from that so my expectation is to improve i think i would say we're slightly away from that i would say we weren't that far well you said 12 and 0 we should have won jay said 12 and 0 we should have won we should have been a we were idiots yeah no. Last year should be we should be everything working. considered. We way overestimated this team. We way overestimated or underestimated what we lost for all the players that didn't come back between the Riley era and 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 Venables. And at the same time, we and an very coach well knew what they were doing. We very well could have won easily all but two games. And those two games, one of them is 
TCU had our number that day, and they were fantastic, and they were having a, a, a dynasty tie or a, a dream season for them for themselves. And our quarterback went out. I know we weren't looking very competitive in the game, but he did exit the game, and he didn't play the next game against Texas. So I, I think that you you've got to realize we were actually pretty close to a, what we would rightfully say was an extremely good outperforming year if just a few things go differently. Yeah, and I'm I mean, wondering how much of that, if, if that does happen, that we are saying we outperformed what we should have versus this is exactly where we should be at. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like is there is there some sort... And, and for me, I, I can almost guarantee you there'd be a bias towards... Oh, this is oh, yeah. exactly what it should be. Me too. And well, yeah, that was think, a silver if, lining that I well, suggested. I think we would have. I think we would still be losses, critical yeah. of. Yeah. I think we'd still be critical of how close probably West Virginia win was. With I their mean, we were critical of an eleven and two season the year before. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was say. We, when we, we were nine we and were, zero. We were kind of like, ah, this is some we smoke were. and mirrors at yeah. nine and zero. But I think I would have had a tendency to be more rosy picture lenient. for Venables and yeah. lenient. And I, my silver lining was. This is a, a chance for everyone to look themselves in the mirror and say, this is not good enough. We need to be better. And for to a player and to get through to guys to say, we've got to be better. Yep. So I, I think, I hope they take this into the off season through this um, uh, winter camp, into the spring, and say, look, guys, we were a losing program last year, and that's not Oklahoma football. It's got to be better. Not... And not allow them because there's no room for them to stand on to say, "Oh man, we were ten and two. It was good. It was close. It was this and that." They like it's embarrassment. It's yeah. like undeniable embarrassment. Yeah, because Venables can say all he wants that this was this is more than likely to be expected or whatever else. You look at that press conference after that Nebraska game. That dude was a beam of light mm-hmm. at three and zero. And I know all of us. I mean, my, at least me were oh man like i'm thinking that game was dominant i'm thinking playoff i'm thinking man, like we had turned a corner yeah like let's like this is it like i'm ready to ride this ride up and then all the way around and then we go and rattle off the 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 tcu loss the texas loss and then uh k-state yeah yeah so k-state was first we went what we went three yeah, and K- three yeah K-State. we went three and three right mm-hmm. or yeah we went three straight yeah. losses after that so yeah, three. Uh, we think, got humbled pretty quickly i do think one interesting thing there's players that are exiting the program, whether it's to the pros or, or, or whatnot, that when they ask about Venables and the season and different things, they all have been on the same page of saying, oh, I'm not worried at all. Like, this is, he's doing mm-hmm. what he's building. It's going to work. Well, it's the- going to happen. Theo Weiss, and leaving these for another players, program, saying And that. these players aren't. There's no reason for him to say that. There's no reason reason for him to to continue the company line Mm -mm. if it's a company line. Mm -hmm. Because they're out, they're gone, they're done. That's not their coach either. They didn't bring him in and didn't recruit him and didn't do this. They had him for one year. And they're all like, oh, I have no doubt in my mind that what what they're doing is going to work. Mm -hmm. And that's you gotta take a positive out of that. You can obviously overplay it, but that that's a strong positive coming from a lot of different data points there. So, All right, so to round it off, what are we what are we saying, Lucas? Jay, you're saying what? Eleven and one? No, I'll say I said I think not. I think nine wins is I think you're saying nine realistic. and three for the way too early nine, predictions. I'm saying nine, nine and three, eight, and Lucas saying eight and four. Yeah. All right. In, Speaking of in February, okay. In February, yeah. <laughs> we'll revisit this topic after yeah, we I get some uh, watch Jackson Arnold. Yeah, we need some. I drink some summertime Kool Aid. <laughs> there will be some summertime Kool Aid, but I'm going to do everything I can to try and stay. I as agree. Tempered and restrained as possible. Yeah, I it's hope tough we're, when I hope we're when nine and zero, and we're saying, "Well, I guess I the next three, I, agree. Lo- I guess the I next three games are losses." Should now, I'll, I'll, I'll give you this: should be five and zero. I'll, I'll say that right now. Right. February. Yeah, five and five and zero looks really strong. Looks really doable. And and hey, there's something to be said for that for morale and everything else, and and mo- momentum, uh, getting guys to believe and buy in. That's a pretty damn strong start. Some teams don't need that. This team needs that. Yeah. This could be really, really good for us to start out the way oh, we I, should I start think, out. I think like a an SMU loss could oh could just be devastating. It honestly. could be really, really, really Thanks bad because it, it's not just inside the program. It's fans and everybody. It starts to very toxic. Boy, it's it could be real. I mean, toxic. thank goodness Tanner Mordecai transferred to Wyoming or to Wisconsin. Well, I completely agree with that. Yeah, no, or absolutely. else that would be a game Absolutely. that could be circled on the calendar. I would be a little nervous. 
Well, let's transition and maybe switch roles. We'll talk about OU basketball a little bit. We're watching OU play Baylor. and they're Playing with that grit. Playing with the grit. Playing with look, that great, great grit. I would say they look competitive given the circumstances. Um, we're in the second half. The, the score is 45-38, 17 minutes to play. They're definitely in this ball game, but we've seen that before, and it falls apart really quickly. Let's talk about the state of the program and where we are, um, and let's also talk about the rumors that we've heard that Porter Mosier is really close to what I believe is his dream job at Notre Dame, that Notre Dame is very interested in him, and he's very interested in it. What do you guys think? I mean, I think that I... I... I really hope that we get a stroke of luck from the Irish, and <laughs> I hope that they uh, they take him off our hands. I I think he's a I think he's a great. I, if if I were to sum up Porter Mosier without ever meeting him, he's a great guy, and I think he's really good at fist pumping and jumping and plyometric things on the sideline. <laughs> I don't know if he's good at coaching talented basketball players. Um, Does he ever have the chance to coach a talented basketball player? Yes. The last two years that he's been at the University of Oklahoma, I think he could have figured something out. Mm. So I, I do think he plays in a tough league. I think he, uh, but I, in what we were talking about at dinner, I really think that he got to ride a lot of motivational factors in these mid major teams or this mid major team that was Loyola um, and got his team to where they needed to be to make the tournament and then just got them especially in that one year uh a couple years ago before he came to OU uh got them in a position where hey we're going to get really excited for this and we're going to all be on this emotional high and we're going to go perform at a high level um within the tournament. I don't see a guy who can consistently motivate his players and get the best out of the talent that well, he has. Well, motivation is his, one thing. It's it's beyond that. Fingertips. It's really just skill set and th- my worry and I have no reason to want him to do anything but succeed. I wanted him to work out. Yeah. I just I was am reluctantly coming to the table having my doubts. And, I, and my doubts come from a place of watching them repeatedly two years in a row with last-minute situations in games make ridiculous mistakes or have game plans that are awful. I, I remember one of the things that I always admired early on and throughout his career at OU with Kelvin Sampson is he was a master at last-minute, last-second shots those possessions, maximizing your chances, and really outperforming and getting guys to rise above wherever their level was, I see the opposite with yes, these teams. Exactly. I see us making bonehead decisions. I see our, our play calling that makes no sense. Reminds me a lot of the football team. In ways it does. I see clock management problems. I see us putting up a, a, a forward in, in uh, Tanner, putting up a, a three-pointer with 20 seconds on the shot clock. When you've got a big lead against Kansas, I see us just absolutely botching last-second opportunities. A, a Baylor at home, or not Baylor? Who was it at home that we went to that game? Iowa State. Iowa State. We don't know how to win. I went to the Baylor we game don't as know well. how to win basketball games, yep. and so when it comes to how the success he had, I it'd be interesting to analyze it. He was at a mid-major school. He did not face a lot of competition, not anything like the competition you face in any of the big conferences, like the Big 12 this year for sure, or any of the major conferences that you'd say. Making the tournament's not that big a deal in those, like getting there is not that big of a hurdle. And winning a few games in a tournament, anything can happen in a, in a college basketball tournament. Anything can happen in a single game. You can rattle off, and he did, and, and how far did he get into the tournament? He got the Elite, elite Eight, eight. I think. Yeah. That's not that hard. That's four victories. The, actually, that's three victories. Yeah. Um, so that that is not that big of an accomplishment. It's not that hard to do. It's almost like we grabbed somebody that we were way overemphasizing the success they had in what could just be luck. I mean, Texas did it with Shaka Smart. Absolutely. That, that failed miserably. That failed miserably. Uh, we did it with Jeff Capel. And that failed. Thank God he had Blake Griffin. Yeah, if he didn't have Blake Griffin, I mean, how bad would they have been? Pretty so bad. I, I don't know. I, I just, it's not impossible to win as a mid-major coach in a, in a major program. I just think it's really hard to know what you're getting. And unfortunately, I don't think, I, I, I'm obviously being really critical. I just don't think he's the right guy fit for the job. Notre Dame seems to maybe think other. I don't know. Uh, maybe they see something or maybe they think it's just a great fit. 
and they want to see something that's there. Do you guys have different views or, or supporting views? What do you think? I mean, I still hope he works out because I want the program to do well. But <clears throat> well, I want the program to do if, well. <laughs> if Notre Dame's his dream job, then I don't feel like it's a major loss if that's where he goes. But I don't know. Basketball is so wishy-washy for me. I go, I go to a couple games a season. I've gone to uh, two this year so far. I've watched most of them. Um, it's not a, it's not a page turner for me. I don't it know is, why. I, keep, two, I don't know why sure. I keep watching the games. Yeah, I didn't watch this last one. The one before. I watched this. about six minutes of it, and, and it was it tough. I knew I had this other. What what, what night was that? It's West uh, Virginia on Saturday. Saturday, I was elsewhere. I don't remember what I was doing, but it was something fun. I was out, um, and it was. I wasn't missing any. I didn't feel like I was missing anything, mm-hmm. and so. Um, and that's sad. I mean, that I used to go to every game. Uh, I used to attend every home game. So and I want to get back to that. It's my number two sport for sure for me at OU. I want him to do really well. And I, mean, I would be six, fine if he could do it. Having but six of the top 17 teams in the country in your league is pretty ridiculous. It's, it's very tough, but we're not looking competitive with those at all. At the same time, it should be a, a lock that you, when you're playing in a conference like that in your Oklahoma, who's perennially the second best team in this league, you should be a lock for the tournament, and we are way on the outside looking in, and that's that's unacceptable. Saturday was the OSU game, by the way. That's right, yeah. Not no, it was. No, it wasn't. No, it was, it wasn't. No, no Wednesday, Wednesday was, was the OSU Wednesday. game, the ice game. Yeah, that, was, they, a, that was a free. horrendous blowout. Yeah, West Virginia was at West yeah, Virginia. We went to Morgantown and got worse. No, that's right. It was our, so, it was our I don't worst know. loss since like All the blowouts blend together. They do. <laughs> and... You know, you look back at the Alabama game, I think the explanation is pretty simple. When you make a lot of shots that you jack up, it's you're going to look good. And and when they miss a lot of shots, and that really was the combination of just catching fire. And, yeah, I'm sure they didn't take – I'm sure they took us lightly too. They're like, oh, oh I'm sure. the ninth absolutely. place team in the Big absolutely. 12, yeah. you know. Well, the last time they played us, they absolutely waxed us as well. Yeah. Other things that I look at that bother me, if I want to pick on Porter some more, I see us taking – Whatever the length is now that they've moved the three-point line out, I see us making taking a lot of shots that are one or two feet on or inside of the three-point line. Uh, I see a guy stepping into coverage to take that shot versus taking a wide-open three from a little further back. I see us waiting too late to even get a shot off, and the shot clock expires on us as if we aren't aware that there's a shot clock, like we're playing Oklahoma high school basketball and we're going to win four to two. Yeah. Little things like that just really give me concern and frustrate me. I saw it last season. I, I sort of tried to overlook it, and it, I'm done overlooking it. It just looks pretty apparent to me. It's just not a lot of not a lot of creativity in my mind. I mean, there's not a lot <laughs> of... Every every basket that we score, I feel like it, we have to just work so hard for it. When I'm watching other teams <laughs> draw plays up that are just... It's it's like butter against us. So, I don't know. It's it's tough. It's been tough to watch this season. Anything else to talk about basketball, football? We got gymnastics about to start. Softball we got starts softball up. starting up. We are a softball gymnastics, gymnastics program, sports. baby. Gymnastics is, a, gymnastics baseball. is killing it. Yeah. So gymnastics is doing really well. Yeah, baseball gymnastics doing up. great. We're gonna, I'm going to attend one of those. Um, baseball is about to start. That's exciting. Getting, getting into the spring is always exciting. So we got some more things to cover in the weeks ahead. We, of course, will we'll be coming to... Uh, to your radio live with some commentary on what's going on in in the spring ball, um, getting ready for the big spring game, and um, we should be there and enthusiastically watching. Do you think Kyler Murray get his trophy? Um, yeah, or his statue? It's gonna be here quick. I don't There's know, a lot it's been a hush, hush. It, it, it has been hush. hush. Don't know if it's happening. I don't might know wait if it's one more. Either. They may be waiting for another opportunity, they like might another wait year. One more. Yeah. So, Might wait till Jackson Arnold has the uh, position can, in hand. They could actually bring Kyler in for one of the games because he tore his ACL, and they're not expecting him back till mid season. Oh, you're right. So they could actually bring him back for one of like maybe the um, maybe the, one of the out of conference games or something. Yeah, yeah. SMU, SMU. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I've got some questions that we'll ask on a future pod here in the off season about the 47-game winning streak, um, some what-ifs about uh, Bob Stoops not leaving, what if this happened, what if that happened, see what you guys think about that. and Some other things, we'll be rating some experiences at venues and atmospheres, the top 
places that we've been. We'll talk about um, what we think are the best programs and how um, some other teams may or may not be fitting into that. Um, Top lot players to talk at their about. position talk, all time. All time players at different positions, like we did last time when we talked about running backs. We've got a lot, a lot of different position to talk about there i think we're going to do a little uh meet a homer or a realist well my running back on that my running back should be in the super bowl he should be in the super bowl or he might be in jail or, or jail yeah. <laughs> they drop those charges right away right for now yeah oh we're for now doing some more investigation for now well we've got a lot coming up in the weeks ahead so stay tuned but until then boomer Sooner. Sooner.